Yo, yo, welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, BodyLogics, the Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men. 20% off online stretching programs with Eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it, so it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have it, to get exclusive offers to your sport, and it's definitely worth worth it. So, do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free 20 takes 20 seconds, so go do it, and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fucali. He's a great guy. He uh. He's the co-founder and he does a lot of live streams on Instagram at, uh, at Living Sisu and with a bunch of elite athletes. And you learn a lot from like the athlete's determination, the resiliency, everything to what me, made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So go on. I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On Spot Sports. I'm Jack, and in today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest, current professional hockey player Justin Schmidt. Justin is playing with the Columbus River Dragons in the Federal Prospects Hockey League. Justin has played in the Federal Hockey League, Southern Professional Hockey League, Central Hockey League throughout his pro career, and also played in the Chinook Hockey League, BRHL, NCHL, AB, and the RHL throughout his hockey career. He also played in the SJHL for junior hockey and is now considered one of, if not the toughest guy in all of pro hockey currently. So this is going to be a fun episode. So welcome to the show, Justin Schmidt. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate you bringing me on the show. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. So like how, to start things off, like how's everything with you? So you're in Port Huron this weekend for the last little trip before the playoffs. So how's everything with that? No, it's, it's good. It's uh it's a little, little colder up here than it is uh it is back down in back down in georgia for yeah. sure we got up here i was like oh i didn't even bring my jacket so i like run from run from the hotel to the to the bus and then get on the bus and then run from the bus to the rink cause it's still it's, it's still a little bit chillier up here than 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 what i'm used to yeah what, what's the temperature over in port Huron right now um it's really windy today i'm just in the in the conference room in the hotel i can i can actually look right across the water and i can see canada but there's you know big pretty big waves there um i don't know it's probably pretty close to freezing right now cool. yeah and it's probably like 80 degrees in columbus right now right no oh, yeah like it's been it's been uh it's been shorts weather for the last month and a half probably down so yeah absolutely but to start things off how <clears throat> I want to get like a little background information on yourself. Like when you started playing hockey, like why you started, what like youth hockey is like for you growing up in Strathmore, Alberta. Um, I actually grew up, I actually grew up east of, east of Alberta. I grew up in, grew up in Saskatchewan. Um, there's just, you know, you grew up on a, grew up on a farm and there was, you know, there wasn't a whole lot to do back yeah. home in the, in the winter time, you know, it's always, it's always pretty cold. So we, uh, you know, we, all we really had to do is, you know, play hockey. And I spent, you know, like any, any Western Canadian kid, I spent, you know, my, all, all my fondest memories of my childhood are, are being at the rink, you know, with my friends and my family and my, my brothers and stuff. Yeah. That, that's awesome. Just like you're like, Canada's like the prime spot for hockey. Like there's nothing, nothing else going over there except like for playing hockey and like everything like that. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you started your youth junior hockey days, or yeah, your junior hockey days with the Evston F Estevan Bruins in the SJHL before being a bit of a journeyman in the in the SJHL, 
playing for the Melfort Mustangs and then the Kindersley Clippers. So, like, what was the process like to find the Bruins to be your first team uh, for junior hockey? Um, they just they picked me up right right out of high school. They they signed me, and I was you know I was only I guess I hadn't even turned eighteen yet, and um, you know went there went there my first year, and you know I was definitely. I was definitely used to playing that tough Western Canadian um, style of hockey. Right. So, you know, I had a lot of fighting majors, you know, as an, as an 18 year old um, against, you know, it was definitely a step up, you know, cause guys were 19, 20 years old. Um, I think I was like five foot 10, 165 pounds fighting guys that are, you know, six, four, two thirty. but you know, you just adapt and evolve. And, you know, back then it was, if you wanted to, if you wanted to play that, if you wanted to play that style of game, um, you kind of, you know, you kind of had to, uh, you kind of had to, um, you know, be, be a tough guy, right. And willing to, yeah. willing to, to take on that role. Right. Yeah. So like, how do you take on like that, like that role and like adapt after like you're going up a league and then like you're fighting 19, 20, 21 year olds and you just have to, they have like far, farther farther reach to to get you and like they're bigger as well. Yeah, for myself, fighting fighting big guys has never never been a problem. Actually, I've always I got a pretty I got a pretty solid chin, so I just you know I can I can sneak in there pretty good. I'm only I'm only five foot ten, so I I definitely got to use my uh, I got to use my chin to my advantage as much as some of those long guys use their reach yeah. to their advantage, right? Yeah, exactly. It do, doesn't matter if you're what what your height is. If you're if, like you're sure if like the weight class is the weight class is different, obviously. But like I've like I'm a goalie, and like I'll get into it with like guys that are like six five, six six, and like you're just you're just in there. You just want to be a tough guy and just go go after them. Yeah, you just gotta you gotta put your put your chin down and and hope for the best. I've had my nose broke probably a dozen times, but I've been. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate I haven't taken too much damage other than that. Yeah, absolutely. But in the SJHL, you went from being with the Bruins before joining the Kindersley Clippers and the Melfort Mustangs. Like, what was your what has been like your overall SJHL experience like in those organizations? Um, every organization was great. I, you know, for me, um, for me playing in that was was great. Just I, I loved the I loved the community and I, you know, the the organization was great. Kindersley was Kindersley was excellent as well. I played with some, you know, some really awesome players in Kindersley. And then I was only in Melfort for, you know, half a dozen games, maybe at the end of my 20 year old year. Um, I was kind of on my way out of junior hockey at that point, ready to kind of take the next step uh, as a professional. Yeah. And like junior hockey is like one of those times where it's like, you're like, you have like all these memories like what are some of like your favorite memories from junior hockey oh the one the ones like the ones i can repeat on here yeah <laughs> yeah obviously um, because like some of those <laughs> some of those stories junior in junior hockey stays in junior hockey that, yeah that's right um you know playing playing with playing like i said playing in esteban was awesome um just the you know the the, the community itself you know they're a pretty they're a well-established organization at the time um Actually, my billets, my billets, my 18-year-old year in Estevan, their son, um, their name is Brad and Candace Newkirk, and their son Reese is actually playing in. Uh, he was well, he was drafted by, he was drafted by the Islanders a couple years ago. Like he was just a tiny little kid back then, obviously. Um, he was drafted by the Islanders, and uh, he's playing played in the American League for part of the season, and he's in uh, he's in the East Coast League now. So I mean, that was pretty neat being able to watch him, you know, grow and, you know, cause yeah. that kid was like, like, he was two years old, chasing me around with his mini sticks. when when he was a little kid, um, I love playing in Kindersley. Playing in Kindersley was pretty cool. Cause I got to play with, with Gio Flaminio, who, uh, you know, he never, never made the NHL, but he probably, he's one of the, you know, he ran into injury trouble early in his career, but he's still one of my best friends. And he's, uh, you know, just uh, he was a competitor and he was one of the most talented players that, you know, that I ever had the opportunity to play with. Yeah. And it's just like 
you see like those guys grow up and you're and it's just awesome to see them grow up and then as well as like you grow up as well like from their from their viewpoint like it's just like the hockey world is so small too that like everyone like knows everyone at some point in their career mm-hmm. yeah 100 percent. i've been i've been fortunate to uh to play with some pretty pretty unique individuals in my uh in my career for sure yeah absolutely but also throughout your first year of juniors you accumulated 223 penalty in minutes like you said and like you became like that enforcer type so like was there any fights that stood out in junior hockey I know you've had a ton of fighting uh, fighting majors but like was there any that stuck out in juniors probably you know to be honest with you probably the ones that, that I remember the most are my losses you know um I fought Jason Beatty a couple times as an 18 year old he was he was Yorkton's captain um, and he went to, he went on to have a long pro career. He was in San Antonio in the American league as a tough guy. And then he's, I think he finished in, in Colorado in the old central league. So I fought him a few more times later on in the central league. And, you know, he left me with lots of scars and lots of stitches in my face. Um, he was a, he was a pretty tough guy. Um, you know, some of the fights I remember were, you know, I remember the guy guy's name, who it was that I fought, but I remember it was, you know, it was a fight that that was meaningful in that game. You know, it was a, it was, you know, a turning point of a game or the turning point of a, of a playoff series, you know? Yeah. So I remember, I remember those fights as well, but I mean, you know, some of them were 20 years ago and I don't have, I don't have a great memory as it is. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, those, those are the ones that stick out for sure were the beady ones. And then obviously the fights I had just, you know, that were, you know, that resulted in, you know, a, a, the turning point of, of a game or the turning point of a, of a playoff series. Right. Yeah. It's like, what's it like when you do get like those opportunities to fight and it turns around a game, like, and like the whole momentum shifts and like, it can go from like one side things to like your, your team will like winning the game and like changing a playoff. Like you said, it's no, there's nothing better. Right. That's, you know, that's why, you know, that's why hockey is, you know, that's why there still is fighting in hockey, right. Whether it's sticking yeah. up for a teammate or, changing the momentum of a game I mean that's you know that's how guys like myself um are still able to to do you know to do what we're doing it's obviously the game's changed a lot um yeah. you know over the course of the last 20 years but um yeah it's it's you know it's it's exciting for me like if I could score goals I'd score goals but you know I'm I, I'm still able to contribute once in a while, you know, yeah. with my fists and my chin, right? Yeah, exactly. So, like, what what has been, like, the biggest difference that you've seen change over the course of, like, 20 years, especially, like, when you go up, like, when you, like, the minor leagues, there's still a lot more fighting, but, like, especially, like, in the NHL, like, everything's starting to die down, like, enforcers aren't really there anymore. Yeah, to, like, to be 100% to be honest with you, I haven't, I haven't watched uh, – I haven't watched NHL hockey in a long time. I just, you know, after once I went pro, you know, I, and I, you know, I realized that I probably was never, you know, going to, you know, once I'd reached the pinnacle of my career and I knew that, you know, that was it. I just started focusing on, you know, things that were things that were within my pay grade. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. That's all you can do it. Cause like once you, once you do that, like you just see everything else improve, and like you're just out there having fun, and like it's I we that I I can tell that you enjoy like playing the game, and then like you also like like bring that old old school style hockey back to the game when a lot of it's just dying down right now. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely changing. Um, when I started when I started in the minors, you know, I you could look down you could look down the other team's bench, and there'd be eight or 10 guys that, yeah. you know, that you were going to, you know, potentially fight. Whereas now it's, you know, you're looking at maybe one or two guys, if that, yeah. you know, so it's definitely, it's definitely changing, but Hey, that's, you know, that's the, that's the way she goes. You know, they take it, they start taking it out at a younger age now. And they, um, you know, it's, 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 it's definitely a dying, it's definitely a dying, um, a dying art in hockey for sure. Yeah, and, like, I've had uh, one of the many guys that you've had goes with, Joe Pace, and, like, he's he always talks about, like, that old-style hockey and, like, 
especially in like the fed and the sb like you're just you want like that old style hockey and like it's it's fun for for the fans it's fun for the guys on the bench on the ice and it just brings out like a whole different atmosphere than it than like if you weren't gonna fight yeah yeah it's i mean and and you know down especially down south i mean yeah, well everywhere nobody nobody doesn't like it i don't think there's yeah. anybody that doesn't like hockey fighting right yeah I mean, so yeah, it's still, it's still exciting for the fans and, you know, there's still that, there's still that old school, tough, tough hockey culture um, in certain places, you know? Yeah. And like, I can go on to go on YouTube and search up hockey fights and watch that for hours. Like that's how, that's how much fun fights are, fights are to, to watch. Absolutely. I, I still do that myself. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, going back to juniors here a little bit to uh, cap off your junior career here, uh, you went to you went to Kindersley, like you said, for the Clippers after your first year in the SAJ, SJHL, where you spent two years there before going to Melford, like one year and a year and a half before going over to Melford. So, like, what was it, you said you've had a good time in Kindersley. So, like, what was it like and just being able to stay with the junior team for like almost two years? Yeah, I, I loved it in Kindersley. I I. I went there as a 19 year old. Actually, I went there as a 19 year old at the at the trade deadline, and we were we were ranked number one in the nation at the time. And you know, so we were you know favorite to win favorite to win a national championship, and uh, and we got swept we got swept first round of playoffs by by an eight seed team, which is I mean upsets happen in hockey for sure. Um, and then uh, you know the next year coming back, we were you know we were just a lot of young guys, you know, that, that they brought in all the old guys went on to, you know, pro or college. Um, and then, you know, being an older guy on a losing team, you know, I wanted my 20 year old year to be, to be my, you know, my championship year. And I, I you know, I went, went to Melford at the deadline and, uh, and it's funny. I actually lived with, with Dave Siegel who is, you know, I've had probably the most fights against my career, him and I were roommates in, in Melford. And then right before the playoffs, I, uh, I blew my knee out. Um, so I never, I never got to see any action in the playoffs that year, which was disappointing. So I'm still, you know, I'm still, I'm 37 years old and I'm still actually, uh, I'm still actually chasing, chasing a championship. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully one comes soon because I don't know how many seasons I got left in me. Yeah, absolutely. But you said you you like roomed with the with the guy that you fought a lot in your over the course of your career. It's like, what's it like when you go when you go live with him? And like, I know like there's a like a dip, there's like a respect factor. Like especially like after games, like you just do whatever you do on the ice, and then after the game, it's like you go grab a grab a beer with them, and everything's fine. Yeah, absolutely. It's just your part. You know, it's 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 part of the game. It's. Um, yeah. You know, I like when people ask me that question, I get asked it all the time. Um, you know, it'd be like uh it'd be like a, you know, a defensive a defensive lineman and offensive lineman going going to battle, you know, in the trenches, you know, in a football game. Yeah. You know, you just you do what you you do it what it takes to to help your team win, you know, whether that's blocking a shot or, you know, getting punched in the face. It's there's no uh, there's no animosity. A mesh especially amongst fighters. There's pretty pretty limited animosity between uh between tough guys yeah and it's like you go out there and just do everything you can to help yourself help your team win the game and change the momentum if you have to and like everyone everyone understands that especially like the tough guys and like uh, every every player like has their role like after the game it's just like you're just chilling and like your your best buds with the, with the guy you fought yeah absolutely absolutely it's uh actually at pregame at pregame skate today i had to uh I had to I had to babysit Nick Williams' kid, uh, his little boy, before the game. I fought Willie six times this year, and uh, they were skating before us. And I I babysat his kid for an hour before uh, before we went on the ice. And it's just yeah, it's um, I think amongst tough guys, there's probably more respect um, in a certain sense because you know you know what each you know you know what you have to go through, and you yeah. know is it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a tough tough job to do because you're you're out there just 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 taking punches to the face or body shots like whatever like you're just 
putting your body through a lot there and like you're just coming out on top and just after the game just doing whatever you can to recover and uh rest for the next game for the next uh yeah. next bout that's it man yeah but to cap off your junior career in Melford with the Mustangs before turning pro like what did you learn in your final year before turning pro and like the adjustment that it would take to get to that pro level um for for myself probably was uh um, you know, the, probably the, you know, the biggest thing was, you know, when you'd see guys that came back from playing pro, um, the adjustment physically you had to make, right. Playing in junior, yeah. you're still playing against teenagers mostly. Um, and then you'd see the pros and you, you know, you realize that, you know, like, holy shit, this is, uh, you know, you're playing against men now. Yeah. Um, so I think that like the, Physi physically the biggest thing was you know you had to be bigger stronger better faster yeah um to go from you know when you made the made the jump from yeah. from junior to pro um like i said because you're you know i was i you know i probably didn't stop growing until i was 25 um so yeah i think i think that's the biggest thing is just the the whole like you know go you know when you're a kid playing against teenagers going pro you're playing against guys with old man strength you know yeah, absolutely. That, that's an adjustment for sure. And then going into pro, you got to learn how to how to adjust to that and like get like get that that much better. But to cap off, last thing on junior hockey, like what's the thing you notice now versus back then when you did play juniors? No, nah, uh, geez, it's it's changed. It's night and day. Like I don't. Um, none of us had cell phones. My first. You know, I didn't have a cell phone my first yeah. year pro. <laughs> that's that's a big change, you know. We <laughs> everybody's got a cell phone now. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think I think players are a little more a little more entitled now. Um, they think they're sometimes guys think they're you know they're they're worth a lot more than uh, than they might be. You know. Yeah. Um, you know, like where, whereas, you know, when I played, it was, it was all about, it was all about the team and what you could bring to the team. Whereas, you know, the more, the more I see these young guys coming in, it's more, you know, they got the attitude of like, what's the team going to do for me kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's that, that part of it's changed a lot. Um, the hockey guys, guys are definitely, guys are definitely more skilled now and like you know like i said the the me first attitude is something i you know have a tough time um adapting to or or understanding um yeah like i said it's just it's a, it's a completely different it's a completely different uh thing you know guys are yeah guys are playing guys are playing video games on the bus you know after games whereas like I to be to be hundred percent honest with you, the last time I turned on a video game was like Blades of Steel on the old like Nintendo, right, with the A and B button. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's a lot of changes for sure. But I mean, the world the world's a changing place, so I guess hockey's gonna probably do the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And like those are some great like things that like now versus then, because like I I do think like you should be doing like what you think should be good for the team or like not not just like me 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 and just like stuff like that like how to help you're gonna you're playing for a team to help them win and be successful and that's how I think it should be. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like you know, even you know, I like you know, I've been a healthy scratch going down the down the stretch here the last month pretty much. I won't I won't dress again tonight. Um, and I mean, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for me because I want to still be relevant and help the team, yeah. but you know, whatever I can do to help the team, you know, whether it's just, you know, um, you know, helping the guys that are in the lineup, you know, stay sharp and, uh, you know, ready for, for playoffs, you know, like I said, as much as, as much as I would like to be, um, you know, relevant in, in, in that sense. I mean, you know, the game is, the game is passing me by. So, you know, if I can leave a mark on, you know, on, on our team and on, on these young guys careers, um, you know, so when they're in their, you know, in their late thirties and they're still, still playing, they can say, you know, I had an old, I had an old, you know, bald tattooed vet that, <laughs> that, uh, you know, help help me realize that it wasn't, you know, just all about, all about them. And it was about, you know, winning a championship together. 
Yeah, absolutely. So transitioning into your pro career a little bit here. So after your junior year concluded, you began your journey to play pro hockey, starting off in the SBHO with the Huntsville Havocs. Like, what was the process like to find Huntsville and join that organization? Um, I actually started, I started in, uh, I started in Elmira in the old United League. Um, and, um, you know, I went there and it was, we were, uh, we were pretty solid. Like we had a lot of guys on, uh, we had a lot of guys under, under NHL contract at the yeah. time. Um, so I was there for, for the first little bit and then, uh, I got sent down and, you know, my, I was heartbroken when I got sent down to Huntsville thinking, you know, like it's over, right? Like, you know, that was my shot. Um, you know, I went from upstate New York to, to Alabama and I got, you know, I didn't know anything about the South and I got to, I got to Huntsville and absolutely loved it. It was, you know, I had the time of my life playing there and played with some of the, some guys in Huntsville that I'm, you know, still friends with. I still talk on the phone with weekly, you know, um, yeah. I loved, I loved every minute I was in Huntsville. One of the biggest actual regrets I have in my career was, you know, I was, I was always trying to, trying to, you know, get to the next level. And I probably, you know, if I had have just stuck it out in Huntsville, um, you know, I probably could still be, still be there. You know what I mean? But, but at the time I was trying to get to the next level and, you know, and, you know, make more money obviously. And, but, you know, I, I could have to a lot of young guys that are trying to get to the next level, get to the next level, get to the next level sometimes the next level isn't all it's cracked up to be either you know if you can find a place find a home in a in a city where you're going to be you know a celebrity right yeah um that you know that's that's sometimes that's worth that's worth more than you know i mean unless you're going to the nhl you know sometimes you know the sometimes the lower levels you know there's guys that are playing to their 40s that have played you know six seven hundred games in cities like knoxville or huntsville right yeah, and like they're just out there to have have fun and just like they're enjoying where they're at and just enjoying the time playing the game. And they can create you can create such a such a nice life for yourself and yeah. and you know in those cities and be a you know be a guy like Jerome Bouchard or Joe Pace or yeah. you know Mike DeGurse or John Gibson you know. Yeah, exactly, and like going into. Going into that season in Huntsville a little bit, like you, you played 49 games, I believe, going with four goals and seven assists. Like, what was it like getting that first pro goal? And then, like, also, like, what was your first feeling of getting in a professional game? Uh, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. It was, I mean, like I said, it was so long ago now. Um, I know my first goal was a, uh, it was against PD. Um, I forget what they're the PD Pride or the PD Cyclones. They're out of Florence, South Carolina. It was at home in Huntsville, and uh, I was I like I I could I was a bit faster of a skater then, and I was a defenseman. And I, I got caught up in the rush, uh, killing a penalty, and ended up scoring a shorthanded goal. And I think I ended up getting in shed. Actually, I think I, I think I got benched because I was up in the rush on a <laughs> not a not a plan that was drawn up <laughs> yeah for sure i'm just glad there was a goalie in that because i think <laughs> the majority of my um pro goals were all empty netters <laughs> at, at, at least there was do you remember who the goalie was or or uh, not really yeah i do because i played i ended up playing with him in tulsa um later on i played with him in tulsa his, his name was d st vincent um, I played with him in, in, I think I might've played with him in Denver too. Um, but yeah, so it was definitely, I definitely, uh, definitely a memorable goal being able to score on a guy that's going to, you know, end up being my teammate years later. Definitely probably gave him shit for it when you did, when you did go to Tulsa, right? Hey, oh yeah, for sure. It was, yeah, I, like I said, I, he probably didn't remember the goal, but I only scored half a dozen of them in my career. So, <laughs> so I remember each and every one of them. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, going into uh, like your first couple games in the in pros, like what was like your first like pro like what the fuck moment? Like what is happening? Uh probably, probably um, my first, my first pro, my first pro fight. I was twenty one years old, and I ended up I was fighting a guy that was you know, 
probably as old as I am now and probably twice my size. And I remember looking up at him and like, Hey, are you, are you ready to go? And I remember looking down at me and being like, are you <laughs> sure? Are you? Yeah. Who, who are you exactly? Um, yeah, that was, you know, it was cool. It was actually kind of neat when I went pro too for the first, you know, quite a few seasons, not having to wear, not having to wear a half visor. Yeah. Um, you know, even now I, I can't stand them. And, you know, probably the majority of stitches I've taken from sticks have came after, after I was forced to forced to put a, put a half visor on my, on yeah. my helmet. Um, that was pretty neat. Uh, not, not having to wear one as much as it's a, you know, it's a simple thing like that. Um, you know, cause it was like, well, that's, I'm a pro now, you know, like you see the guys and, you know, cause it's only in pro hockey where you don't have to wear a visor. Right. So, yeah. Do you, uh, do you take warmies with, with, uh, no Bucky on or do you take them? Mm. Of course I got to try and I usually try and blind, blind the other team with the bald <laughs> spot on my head. Any, <laughs> any chance you can get a, get a thing on, get a, like, uh, I, I don't know what the word is, uh, uh, upper hand and on that team, like you're going to, you're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to, trying to shine my bald spot in their <laughs> eyes, you know, blinded yeah absolutely but uh you played in 49 games your first year pro with 274 penalty minutes like what was like the sp back in 2006 2007 like compared to the league now because like you just you hear a lot of like it was like the jungle back then in the day yeah it, there was just a lot of there was a lot of mutants back then there's you know it was kind of it was kind of you know the same probably the same as now i mean like i said fighting's not the way it was but you know, you get a lot of, lot of, you know, guys that have been all the way to the top yeah, and all the way to the bottom. Um, and then you had guys fighting for a way up. So, you know, it was like, it was a mix of guys that were fighting to get to the next level and guys that were fighting to stay relevant, you know? So there was, you know, it was, it was a lot of old school, old, old school, tough guys, you know, guys that are probably in their fifties now wow. um, and young guys coming in, you know, trying to get to you know trying to you know become established which is one thing that that that's different now is there is no young guys that are coming in trying to get established because the game you know because fighting's on its way out right so yeah so really now it's just us old guys still fighting to you know keep it that way but once once we're gone we're kind of the we're kind of the end of it you know yeah, for sure. So then you spent the next few years going from the SB to the Central Central Hockey with the with the Huntsville Havoc to the Twin City Cyclones in the SB, and then you went to the Rocky Mountain Rage and the Tulsa Oilers in the CHL. So like, what was that transition period going from the SB to the CHL? Um, it wasn't a huge, it wasn't a huge transition. Like the Central League, the Central League, all the teams in the Central League were were affiliated with NHL teams at the time. So, you, you know, there's a lot, the guys were obviously making a lot more money. Um, and, you know, it was, it was definitely, it was definitely a step up as far as, as far as the treatment goes, you know, like we'd, we'd fly, we'd fly to a lot of places yeah. and, you know, we'd, you know, there was a lot less, obviously a lot less bus travel. Um, yeah. The, as far as the hockey goes for myself, it wasn't a huge transition um and as far as as far as fighting fighting guys i mean tough guys are tough guys everywhere right um yeah there was a few there was a few like more like big name fighters that you saw fighting you know guys like bob probert and peter warrell and and um and scott parker and those guys and you'd see you know you'd be like oh i gotta fight this guy and he fought ty domi two years ago you know what i mean yeah. so so there was that but yeah, for myself, it wasn't wasn't the biggest transition. Like I said, I I probably logged a little more minutes in the Southern League as like you know I, I had more of a role as a player yeah. in the Southern League at that time. But um, but you know when I went to the Central League, I was you know I probably had to fight a little bit more and take on a few more of the other team's heavies as opposed to you know being responsible, being having to be a responsible defenseman you know, at the, at the lower levels. Yeah. Was there any like big names that like everyone would know if, uh, when you fought in the, the CHL? Um, oh yeah. Like, uh, 
Mike Scroy was in uh, was in Allen, I think. Um, Brett Angel was in was in Shreveport. He was pretty tough. Um, Jason Beatty was in was in Colorado. Greg Pankowitz was in Colorado. Um, uh, Oklahoma City had uh, had Robin Gomez and and Jason Flack. Um, Colt King was actually a teammate of mine in, uh, in Denver. So there were, there were, uh, there were, you know, there were some, some pretty tough guys that were, you know, yeah. real tough. Robin, Robin, big snake. I had a few with Robin when he was, when he got sent down from, from Milwaukee and he was in, uh, he was in Fort Worth. I had a few with him and yeah, there were some, there were some tough guys for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's unreal. And like, just to get out there and, be at, be in the CHL and I fight these guys that are are big tough guys like that. But uh, like also in the CHL, like you hear of some cities that you don't usually hear of hockey cities or like or like have like major like NHL AHL teams there. So like, what was it like just visiting different different cool cities and like some cities that were that are probably very interesting as well. Yeah, there was a lot. I loved I loved the the South. Like when we'd go down to South Texas. Um, you know, we'd play in, in Corpus, Corpus Christi and Laredo and uh, McAllen, Texas. They were the real, real grand, real grand killer bees, they were called. Um, that was a, that was a fun trip. Uh, heading out, heading out west, Arizona was always fun. Shreveport was cool because I'd never been, I'd never been to Louisiana before. So Shreveport was a cool city. And then, you know, going up north, there was, you know, Rapid City, South Dakota was cool. And, Wichita, Tulsa, you know, like playing in Tulsa and then playing against Oklahoma City, we'd get 16, 7,000, 17,000 people for games, you know, in our rink in Tulsa and then back and back at the at the Ford Center in um, in Oak City. It was it was always cool playing in front of those big crowds, you know. Yeah, and like you don't really like see like hockey teams in Tulsa or Kansas. Oklahoma like but like to go there like that must have been just pretty cool to experience and just experience like especially like when you get like six six thousand seven thousand sixteen thousand like whatever it is like it must be it must be pretty cool especially coming from those cities yeah those, some of those buildings were electric you know it was it was an exciting and like I said it was a lot different back then because everything was live entertainment right everybody yeah. nowadays is you know they want to be they want to be, you know, they can, they can Google things on their phone and they can bring it up. Whereas, you know, like I said, my first year pro, I didn't have a cell phone. So, you know, everything was, you know, everything was, was live, right. It was, it was all happening right, right, right before your eyes. So, so I think the atmosphere in a lot of those buildings was, was pretty, pretty cool, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like you just do whatever like you can at that point, like just do, do whatever you can get, get in some fights and, enjoy it enjoy playing the game yeah 100 percent. it was i got you know some pretty pretty awesome memories of, of a lot of those cities i mean i do i have some pretty cool memories you know i've developed i've got cool memories from from everywhere i've played you know throughout this journey yeah absolutely so like what goes through your mind when guys are just feeding you fists and you're feeding them fists and just like what's like the mindset like when you are when you do gain a fight and just try not to not to lose the fight um I've done it so long and I've done it so much now, you know, when I get punched in the face, typically I'm just, I'm reading off, you know, where I felt that punch hit me and I'm, you know, I can time his next one coming in from that side, or, you know, I can feel the transition in his body to where, you know, if he's switching, switching hands on me, I can feel the weight shift and I can, you know, get, you know, get my chin in a certain place to protect it from, from the other side. And, you know, it's, it's not so much running on adrenaline anymore as, you know, running on experience and, and yeah. you know, how to do it. I mean, like I said, when I, when I get the puck on my stick in front of the net, I kind of, everything kind of goes blank. Right. So I guess it, for me, for, you know, that, like a goal scorer, they get the puck on their stick in front of the net and they're looking at the goalie and trying to find a, find an opening, you know, whereas for myself, I'm just, you know, hoping that I don't miss the net. Um, so same, same goes, same rule applies when, when I, you know, when I'm getting in a fight, right. I'm just trying yeah. to, trying to feel it out and get an upper hand because, you know, I've been there so many times in my life. Yeah. A lot more goes into it than you would think, especially like since you've been doing it for so long, like it's a lot more tactical and like just 
experimenting and seeing what other guys are doing and like if they're shifting their weight or what they're doing like just to just to throw that next punch yeah 100 percent. yeah exactly so then the next 10 years you go through playing in uh senior leagues in canada over over in alberta so like what was senior hockey like for you especially like transitioning from pro to senior hockey and then back to pro eventually um i was actually I was pretty surprised, like playing playing senior hockey, um, going from going from the Central League to to the to the Chinook League. The Chinook League was probably a little bit more skilled. Like you know, the guys had guys had nine to five jobs, um, so they weren't practicing as much. Is you know, so there was less less systems. But you know, you look down the roster of any one of those senior teams, and and you know, there's you know every every single guy in their top their top nine forwards that all played you know at least at the american league level so the the skill level was really high it was a little more run and gun um less fighting you know it was less less of a show than it would be you know at the pro level but it was uh it was still it was still uh it was still pretty pretty um it was pretty pretty high level hockey you know yeah i was gonna ask did you get any fights or like i was like obviously like it's uh it's a li- bit more or less fighting in senior hockey but did you uh have to strap anyone oh yeah i fought geez, i fought uh probably not as much um but i definitely you know it was probably still you know every every couple games you'd find find someone to get into it yeah. with they were more a little more heat of the moment than, you know, as opposed to like, you know, you knew who you were going to fight and when you were going to fight. Whereas in senior hockey, you know, it was like, you know, something dirty would happen and, you know, it it would be like, okay, we got to go out and, and, you know, deal with it as opposed to in the minors when, you know, you can fight three times a game yeah, and then you get kicked out. Whereas in senior, you know, a couple leagues, it was a two fight rule, but the majority of them, you, you know, you're one and done. So, but I fought, you know, I fought some, some really, really tough guys in senior hockey too. So. Yeah, ex- yeah, absolutely. And like, so it's not like, not like your typical beer league game when you get like clowns, like trying to go at you for no reason. And just like, they just want to fight to fight. No, no, it was, it was pretty professional. You know, like I said, you know, a lot of those teams are competing for, for the Allen cup. And if you look at the yeah. Allen cup, you know, they got guys, guys have gone from playing in that league. And then back to the American League, or you know, and a handful of guys have gone from you know playing, playing, and playing in AAA senior hockey, back to the NHL even, you know. So, so it was it was definitely uh, it was definitely a unique experience, and it was a great one, you know. Yeah, that's on that's unreal, and like I'm sure senior hockey in Canada is top notch, and like there's no better competition than there. It's like, what was it like playing, just being being able to play in Canada again, like? in like the near near alberta it was it was cool because you know like you're playing like it was all small towns right so every every um every town every community had such a sense of pride in their hockey team because really you know they're just small small farming communities there's not much to do in the winter time right so everybody in town would be out you know drinking beer in the stands and that was their that was their friday saturday night thing was to go cheer on the boys right yeah, that, hey, that's all that you can do is just go out there and cheer on the boys and have a have a great time. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. Yeah. So then you find yourself back in the in the pro hockey game this season with the Columbus River Dragons of the Federal Prospects Hockey League. So like, what was it like coming back to the pro the pro hockey world and playing in uh, Columbus? Oh, it was. You know, I'm so you know, I, like some days I still have to kind of pinch myself to you know tell myself I'm not dreaming, right? I was. I was actually down, I was down in, I was in Huntsville, Alabama, just, uh, I was hanging out with my, my old captain from when I played in Huntsville and a buddy of mine's the goalie for, for Columbus, Jared Rutledge. And he called me and was like, Hey, we're, you know, we need a tough guy right now. And it was right before training camp started. I was like, well, if I, you know, if I can make it happen, I will. So I got my, got my equipment sent down. And so it's, it's, it's been, it's been, uh, like I said, it's been pretty, pretty unique and pretty exciting for me to be, for me to be able to do this. And I mean, the fans, the fans in Columbus are unreal. Like I remember playing against Columbus, you know, for a lot of years in the minors. 
so to be on the other side now in Columbus, it's, uh, it's, it's neat for sure. Yeah. And like we talked about before this episode, before, like we started recording live, like it, there's a lot of ups and downs in pro hockey. It's like, were some of like the ups and downs that you had to face and like, how do you overcome those, those downs? Oh, it's for me, they're for, for me, they're, they're all ups. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't find anything to, uh, to complain about I mean other than I can't find a dance partner every uh, every single game but but you know just to be to be in such a, a cool city in the south and it's warm all the time and I, I actually live across the river in in Phoenix City Alabama and to be you know just back in the south and you know playing for such a professional organization such a professional well-run organization is uh you know it's 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 unheard of for me at my age to be able to make that comeback you know yeah, that's unreal, and what a comeback it is, and like especially going to Columbus, like it's a, it's one of the greatest areas to play in the over in the Fed, and like just like you said, like the fans, like you see it on like YouTube when I'm watching the live streams, and like you can see the fans are into it, and like that that loud that building gets loud, the uh, Columbus Civic Center. Oh, it's 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 it, yeah, like I said, it's it's electric for sure. It's you know it was one of the it was one of the spots that I. You know, when I was playing and playing in the Southern League when they were the Columbus Cottonmouths, it was like they were. It was one of the places to play. You know, there Huntsville. Yeah. Like I said, anywhere in the South, anywhere, anytime you're able to play hockey in, uh, and then leave the rink and go play 18 holes of golf, you're you're pretty fortunate. <laughs> yeah, it's not that's not bad. Just 80 degrees, 70 degrees, whatever. Just go go hit the links and grab grab some beers with the boys and just enjoy it. 100 percent man yeah but uh throughout like your the season do you do you give uh lessons to the, any of the boys about like how to fight in case they ever have to jump in i do yeah like like i said like there's not there's not too many guys guys left that really that really fight but some of the guys that do play that hard nose style that are probably going to end up getting in a fight um you know I'll, I'll give them a few tips as to you know show them how to how to look after themselves and, and protect themselves. You know, essentially it's, it's about protecting yourself. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, for sure. I've, I've, I've shown guys, given guys some, some pointers and some tips. Yeah. That's, hey, that's all you need in a, in a friend and teammate is just giving, giving tips and giving back to the game and giving it, giving it how, like how you came up from, from the game and how you learned to learn the ropes. Absolutely. Yeah. So throughout like the season, like, I've watched a ton of like Columbus Columbus games in like Port Huron, like Joe when Joe Pace is there. It's so, like you guys have gotten into it a lot, and like you guys you guys just go to town. So, like, what's it like fighting a guy like Joe Pace and just just like uh, the, Joe, the Joe amount of great, times you guys fight? Joe's a, Joe's a great guy, and you know he's he's taking over the taking over the reins in uh, in Mississippi next year, and. You know, he's a, he's a competitor and I've known Joe for a long, 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 long time. Like, you know, we played against each other my rookie year. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it, we're just trying to keep that, that hard nosed breed of hockey going. And, uh, you know, it's just, we've had some great, we've had some battles for sure. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun and, and, you know, it's, I, I didn't even realize the, you know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not the best hand when it comes to, uh, social media and you know i don't know all this stuff but apparently a lot of our fights have gathered a lot of a lot of media attention so i mean the ego side of me says that's pretty cool you know and, and like that's uh i've seen some of those in like john boy media like he's one of the bigger guys of like he does a lot of baseball but like he's done like breakdowns of you and uh you and joe going at it and like they're you guys just have a lot of fun doing it and like you guys just, you'll just do it the, ne the next game like right off the bat yeah it's it's like i said it's 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 a lot of fun and 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 the the crowd the crowd loves it i mean you yeah. know anytime you can have you can have seven eight thousand people you know ten thousand people standing on their feet going bananas that's you know that's there's nothing more there's nothing more exciting yeah exactly but uh to wrap before we wrap things up i have a few more questions for you so uh what's your what's your game day routine um, usually depending on the, depending on the city we're in, um, at home, it's usually, I live with, uh, I live with Ian White. So 
So usually uh, we get, we get up and head to practice and uh, go, you know, go to pregame skate. And then we grab, grab a little bit of lunch and Whitey usually goes and suntans in the backyard. And I, uh, I usually have a little bit of a cat nap and then, you know, go to the rink and, and get myself prepared. The older I get, the, you know, the older I get now, the last time I like, you know, I, I used to show up at the rink, you know, four hours before the game. Yeah. Whereas now I prefer to be, you know, two hour, hour and a half, two hours before game time and, you know, show up and, and get stuff done. Like I said, I, I only, you know, especially with the weather being what it is, you know, I like to stay pretty busy. I don't, I don't typically have, um, I don't, I don't, I don't nap as much as I used to. I used to have like three hour pregame naps, but, but now I'll have a quick shutdown. And then, you know, if I can go, you know, go fishing or, or, you know, go ride, go ride horses or go golfing or do something outside on a game day, I'm going to take advantage of that. Right. Yeah, exactly. What, what's it like uh, living with Ian White? <laughs> living with Whitey's like, I mean, it's like, it's, you know, Whitey's, Whitey's one of my closest friends. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to be, you know, living with a guy that's played, you know, over 10 years in the NHL. Yeah. Um, he's, he's one of the fun, he's one of the grumpiest human beings I know, but he's, he's also one of the funniest, funniest people on earth. Um, like you said there, you know, I've gone, I've gone through, you know, me and Whitey over the course of this season, you know, we've gone through a lot together and he's one of the, you know, he's one of the few people that I can trust wholeheartedly with, with anything. And, you know, I think yeah. Whitey feels the same about myself, you know? Yeah. And like, that's especially like when he has a, he has, he had like a 10 year career in the NHL, like you learn so much and like you guys just, just like, oh, he, he like probably the, has a ton of stories as well that he can just tell all day. Yeah, they like they, it's unbelievable the stories he's got, and like the young the young guys especially, right? They hear them, and it's like even you know we I I fought guys this season, and you know they've like asked me in the penalty box. They're like, "Hey man, like after the game, like I, I'm scared to ask him, but can can like can you bring Whitey over to our dressing room so I can get his autograph?" <laughs> that, that's unreal, and like or when people this- people will see us. <laughs> people will see us out and they'll like they'll like be like hey can i get a picture and me and whitey will walk. i'm like sure i'd love to get a picture and they'll hand me their phone <laughs> oh you want me to take the picture of you and whitey okay you don't want it you don't want me in the picture <laughs> no <laughs> they just want they want me to take the picture of them and whitey <laughs> but like that that's still sick that like you, you get like he gets that that attention still and like that like He's nice enough to like take pictures oh, like, he's, after he's, the Whitey's game, most, like stuff like that. Whitey's the most Whitey's the most down to earth person I've ever met. You know, not even most down to earth hockey player. Yeah. I've ever met, but but Whitey's, you know, one of the most down to earth human beings I've ever met. You know, he he was born he was born without an ego. And I think, you know, even you know, with his, you know, he obviously had to the career he did because of his, you know, high skill level, but also just because of the the person that he is you know yeah that that's just that's awesome especially like having him as a roommate like that's that's sick and like you just like you guys just have like a ton of fun with the uh, with living together and like just playing on the same team as well oh absolutely like i said he's he's got more talent in his pinky than i have in my entire body but <laughs> yeah being able being able to watch him do things he does on the ice is uh is pretty cool too you know yeah, that that's unreal. But my next question is, uh, what's your favorite pump up song? Like, you're trying to get a little lift in the gym. Listen to this before you go on the ice. Like, what are you listening to? Uh, you're insinuating that I go to the gym first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm kind of I'm probably a country music guy, but I'm, that's yeah. pretty much what we got we got playing at the house all the time is is country music. Um, like you know, these guys all listen to to rap now in the dressing room. So I'm I'm not a big rap guy, but yeah, like Metallica, ACDC, Slipknot, Corn, you know, that type of stuff. And then, you know, even some even some faster country music songs would probably be my my go to. Yeah, I, I love that. Like when I'm on the on the road going to going to games, like I'll just blast country and like roll down the windows, could be 30 degrees, I don't care, and like just listen to country. Nothing. Better. Absolutely, man. Yeah, but uh my last question for you is who's your all time favorite tough guy in the game of hockey? Mm. 
Uh, probably I'd say Bob Probert if I had to, you know, just because he was, you know, kind of the ultimate team guy. Um, yeah. Probably Bob Probert. Um, I was a, I was a Montreal Canadiens fan growing up, so so Lyle Odeline was uh, was another one. Um, yeah, guys, probably probably those two guys were my were my all time favorite. It was pretty neat when I played when I played in Denver. Um, Scott Parker had just retired from the Avalanche, and he was you know working with our team. And I you know I I never really fo- I didn't follow uh, many Western Conference games back then. Um, so I didn't pay much attention to him, but it was pretty neat being able to spend time with Scott Parker. And, you know, you know, I've kind of tried to model myself after, you know, the way Scott carried himself, you know, after getting to know him, I kind of like to model myself by the way, you know, he carried himself around, you know, within the community of, of Denver and, you know, around his teammates and stuff. Yeah. that That's awesome. Like you, he played in the NHL, like you, there's no better person to, surround yourself with and like learn from and then learn learn the ropes and just try to try to emulate that person as well 100 percent, man yeah but uh schmitty thank you so much for coming on the show i really appreciate your time and i want to wish you the best of luck with the last weekend of the regular season going into playoffs and i look forward to following your career the rest of the way awesome man thanks so much for having me i appreciate you bringing me on yeah absolutely it was a lot of fun okay well take care of yourself and uh and we'll talk soon okay Yeah, absolutely. You too. Later, bro. See ya.